there a lag or a, can everyone hear me? Uh, I think there's we're, a lag. We're gonna, we're gonna like, um, yeah, just waiting for a few more people to, to be on and uh, gonna go ahead and start. How are you doing? Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. How's the family, so, and, uh, Sheikh Jamal? Everyone's good, Alhamdulillah. Good, good, Thank you good. so much. So you're home, huh? Same. Alhamdulillah, yes, we are. <laughs> Everybody else. Oh, the kids are doing okay. well. Alhamdulillah, yes, they're so happy to have both parents home all the time. Oh, wow. <laughs> Are the parents happy to have the kids home? That's the question. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Actually, it's a very big blessing to spend this much time with them. Actually, it's a very big blessing. Part of the gratitude, right? It's a good yeah. example of gratitude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Okay, so we're gonna um, go ahead and start, I guess. Uh, so we're, we're very blessed and very honored to have you with us today. Um, uh, and um, we did share uh, your um, uh, biography, so uh, I guess everybody is uh, aware of who you are and uh, they are, I'm, I'm sure they're very excited as well uh, to hear from you. And uh, so without further ado, uh, we'll, um, what we're going to do uh, for everybody uh, who has joined us, um, we are going to be um, listening first for maybe around 25 minutes. Is that uh, about the time, uh, Shaykh? Okay. So, uh, and then after that, uh, you could start sending in your questions uh, on the chat. And I will uh, start, um, you know, taking questions um, as they come. Uh, so please forgive us if we don't have enough time to answer all the questions, uh, but we'll uh, try to do that as much as possible. And if you don't mind, uh, just for the sake of time, and uh, you know, maybe you could kind of restrict your questions to uh, the topic that we're discussing. Is that fair uh, uh, to you also? Yes, yes, that would be okay. wonderful, inshallah. Okay, sounds good. So go ahead. Thank you so much for uh, joining us uh, this, uh, this Friday. Okay. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah rabbil alameen, wa salatu wa salama ala khair al-mursaleen, Muhammad al-Nabiya al-Ummi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma alamtana innaka anta al-alim al-hakim. Rabbi Shahri Sadri wa Yasirli Amri Lisani Yafkahu Qawli. first I want to say I'm very honored to be with everyone um, today uh, when Dr. Rehiba invited me for this program. Um, she is a woman that we hold uh, a very, very high esteem for us in the, at the Majlis, alhamdulillah, she came and she is a not just a, a teacher, but she's really a mentor figure um in the field. And um I would say like for it's it's such a blessing as to, be, to, ha to have a woman like Dr. Rehiba to look up to as someone who's younger and growing up. Uh, I, not so young, alhamdulillah, but just not, um, you know, just new in experience also. Um, just to have people ahead of us that, are, that have already paved the way, it's an honor to know them and alhamdulillah, an honor to serve and help in any way, inshallah. Um, the topic that I wanted to talk about today uh, was actually gratitude, but in particular, having gratitude in the context of um, test and tribulation, trial and tribulation. And um, one of the elements of getting to gratitude, you know, there's different, there's different sort of like stages. Some people may already be at gratitude from the very beginning, but um, for other people, they have to work through other stages before they get there. And, um, when a tribulation or test first comes, uh, the believer, when they see that difficulty, the very first thing that is that they're sort of confronted with is the experience of patience. Um, can I be patient with this? What does patient look, patience look like? And if they have in their hearts and in their ability and in their capacity, some, you know, that Allah subhanahu wa has given them the tawfiq for that, um, part of what even, you know, it's like the step ahead helps complete the step before. So the step ahead of patience is, um, is actually to, it is a contentment, to have rida with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when a person has rida, and I didn't understand this, I actually misunderstood this concept, I think when I was younger growing up, um, I always thought contentment meant that you were happy, like you were like happy that something 
um, uh, even a tragic situation is happening, that somehow you're able to be, be happy with it. And I think that's why I struggled with it as a concept is because I didn't understand it well. And alhamdulillah, I think the time that in my life that it really fit in the right, that I, just the concept, how do I understand rida? How do I understand contentment with the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Um, the time in my life that it, that, it, that it really clicked or this, the idea made sense is actually at when I heard Dr. Omar Farooq Abdullah talk about it. And I, um, you know, he's a great scholar, international scholar of our times. And he's, I'm going to actually read his quote because it's, it's like, I, I just feel like it's, you know, even summarizing it is not as good as just reading it. Um, he says, to be content with a thing doesn't mean you are personally happy with it. So herein, you know, he confronts my mistake in, in the way that I have thought about it. To be content with a thing doesn't mean you are personally happy with it, but it means that I am content with my, with God, my Lord, who has ordained this for me. We can be content in happiness and content in sadness. All the things that transpire in our lives are from God. He willed for it to be. Contentment is a type of submission that I have no complaints against him. And I can do the best in the situation I am in. And I will seek to find the wisdom that God has in this. You know, this last part. I can do the best in the situation I am in, and I will seek to find the wisdom that God has in this. So a person can be very sad and still have contentment with God. They have they've surrendered their affair. Right? When someone passes away or dies, for example, that's that's you know, the human response is not happiness, the human response is sadness, and yet the person can have contentment with God during that time. Um and uh, this, this I think, invites other questions for people. When the idea that I can um, surrender to God, accept that my my Lord, who I have tried to have a good opinion of, and, and inshallah, may Allah allow us to have the best opinion of Him always, in good times and in difficult times, um, and knowing that, you know, if my Lord is good. If my Lord is great, if my Lord is the most wise, if my, Lord, if my Lord is the most merciful, then all that he has decreed for me is also good. You know, if he is good, then his decree is essentially good. If he is good, then there's no such thing as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreeing something, you know, that's bad for someone. And, you know, the only time that something is bad is when it's a punishment. And I think this invites another question, which is uh, in times of difficulties and tribulations, people wonder, is this a punishment from God? Is he punishing us? Is this a punishment or is it a test? And um, I wanted to read um, one of the statements from Sheikh Abdul Qadir Al-Jilani uh, when he uh, is telling us about how to know if we are in a situation of tribulation or punishment. He says, if in tribulation you are in pain, but you are showing patience, then it's actually expiation of sins, right? If a person is in pain, but they're, they're, they're uh, turning to God and they're trying to be patient, then it's, an, then it's actually a cleansing of sins for them. It's an expiation. If in affliction you feel contentment with Allah's decree, then it's elevation in ranks. If the affliction hits and, as, and you are not in the place of patience, but you're actually in the place of, um, of contentment, then the way that you experience that affliction is, an, is not just not simply purification, but actually elevation of your place with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah. And um, if in affliction we reject God, if a person in affliction, a trial comes, and they reject God, then it's a punishment. Then it's a punishment. The affliction comes and they see that, they recognize it's from God and it causes them to reject God. That's the only time that we can really say that's a punishment. And when we look at the stories in the Quran, there's the story of, we look at the people who rejected Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and when the punishments came, they continued to reject. When they were warned of a punishment coming, they continued to reject. Pharaoh had how seven different plagues, right? Seven different, but he continued to persist in the rejection of God. Um, 
we look at the people of Thamud or the people that Nuh came to, they knew affliction and punishment is coming. They were told it's going to come in this many days and they still rejected God. For them, it was a punishment. Um, for the, and even in those times, people who believed in God were protected from that punishment and, and, and they were saved. Now, um, the same tribulation can be a test for one person. Um, you know, it can be a, in the sense that it's an expiation from their sins. And it can be elevation for another person. And it can be a punishment for someone else. Right. Um, but subhanAllah, the very fact that a believer is asking, let's say, a religious teacher or anyone about, oh, is, you know, is this a punishment or, or a test is just a sign that that person is already turning to God. And if that person is already turning to God, then inshallah, they're at the, at the very least, they're at the rank of someone who is um, being cleansed and purified through the tribulation and through the test. Um, and subhanAllah, something that's also very interesting about this is that a person who goes through the test and the tribulation in the beginning is just really hard and it's a lot of pain and it's difficulty and they're just trying to be patient. Um, they continue to turn to God and they continue to worship him and they continue to try their best to, to, to be a servant of God. Um, but, you know, they the main thing that they really feel throughout the tribulation is the, the difficulty and the pain of the tribulation that's just difficult to bear. That person at some point may shift from a place of patience to a place of contentment. And subhanAllah, how in patience they are purified, right? And then all of a sudden they find them, they, they find that they're just given the ability to surrender their affair to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they just have a sakina that comes into their heart. And it's not that the situation is easy, right? They still, if someone's passed away, for example, they still miss the person who's passed away um, or whatever the tribulation or the test might be. But they find that their heart has now been able to just accept and surrender. And what they find in their heart in the middle of the storm is just surrender and peace with God, right? They might still be sad, but there's this, this element that has now eased it. And, you know, inshallah, we hope and we pray that that is a sign as what Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani mentioned, that when the person feels a, a, a contentment with Allah's decree, then inshallah, it's an elevation of their ranks. So it's a sign. And that's a glad tiding. That's a glad tiding. That that's, you know, if a person can get there, you know, inshallah, that's, that's, that, that's not something they necessarily even fully did by themselves, but it's something Allah granted them, gave them, put in their hearts. And we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts that in our hearts. I mean, the other um, lesson that I think is important uh, when we think about gratitude in times of difficulty is um, something I heard Sheikh Walid Musad talk about. And again, this is something that I feel many people in the Muslim community haven't learned well. Uh, in terms of whether it was not taught right in their Islamic school or it was maybe they heard the message wrong, maybe they understood the message wrong. But, um, but this belief that God is, you know, out to punish people for, for just for the sake of punishing them. Um, and that's not the case. So Sheikh Walid Musad, he talks about Hadith um, Qudsi of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu I am as my servant thinks I am, right? I am, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us that he is as we believe he is. And he says that if a person is facing a test or a tribulation and they look at that test or tribulation and they say, this is God punishing me. This is a punishment from God. Then they actually will experience that test or tribulation as a punishment. Like that's how they will experience it because that's what they believe to be true about God. But if a person goes through a test or tribulation uh, and what they're thinking is, my Lord is purifying me. He's cleansing me, right? And inshallah, he's 
purifying me, purifying me through this and elevating me in my rank, then that is, inshallah, how they will experience that test. Now, if you look at the equation, when someone feels like they're being punished, why do they feel they're being punished? Because their sins. I did bad deeds, now I'm being punished. Because I deserve to be punished because of my bad deeds. What's the difference between that and the person who feels like they're being cleansed? Person who's being cleansed, I did bad deeds, right? But God wants good for me. I did bad deeds, but my Lord wants good for me. And this punishment is coming and it's difficult and through difficulty, right? And patience and difficulty, sins are cleansed. The, sec the second person who feels that the, punish the, the test or tribulation is coming to them as a cleansing, uh, they also make toba. It's not like this person says, okay, it's, I don't, this is just purification. And no, they actually, they recognize that this is a time to turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they look at themselves and what they can fix. Um, and, and we try to think about what are the things that we can do better in our worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when, um, and that person also does make toba, but the place that they're making that toba from is from a place of love of God. Uh, they're making that toba from this place of, I know my Lord wants good for me. Um, that my Lord is good and he wants good for me. And so this, because they, because of, again, having that better opinion of God, they actually will have a better experience of that same test or tribulation. So part of it really is to have, um, a good opinion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa he says, a narration, I honestly think that this narration, we can never say it enough because it's a reminder. It's literally like we need to be reminded always that wondrous is the affair of the believer, right? Uh, for there is good for them in every matter. And this is not the case with anyone except the believer. If they're happy and they think Allah, then thus there is good for them. And if they are harmed and they show patience, then there's also good for them, right? In both cases, it's good, then there's reward. Um, so there's no like, I know that I, I think um, I, I saw responses to the coronavirus of people seeing the Kaaba empty and the, uh, you know, Medina al Munawwara empty. And some of the responses were like, um, you know, Allah has deprived us of his you know, two sanctuaries and he's deprived us of the mas masajid and he's deprived us and he's deprived us and he's deprived us. But, and it, the focus is on his deprivation. Um, and it's, yeah, he has, but you know, maybe he has taken something away from us in order to give to us, right? Ibn Atta'ala talks about that. Sometimes um, Allah mana'ak fa'atak. He's taking something away, but he's actually giving you something else instead. And if I believe that my Lord is good, then I believe that any time he does anything to us, it's actually what is best for us, right? There's no what if, if only, uh, which is actually the Prophet ﷺ said, those words open the door of the shaitan. There's no what if or if only. It's, again, going back to the beautiful, beautiful words of Dr. Amr Farooq Abdullah, um, nothing in the realm of possibility is better than what was. Nothing in the realm of possibility is better than what was. That's what we believe about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? That he is constantly decreeing that, not just that which is good, but literally that which is best. Um, and so, you know, for us to be able to go through a difficult time, and it may be a painful time or stressful time, and still know that our Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants what's best for us, that this is, that he is still the most wise. And if anything, tests and tribulations are manifestations of the beautiful names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in, uh, in the way that we can relate to him through these times. Um, that through this, even in this tribulation, there is so much mercy. Even in this tribulation, there is so much wisdom. Uh, and we'll talk about that in a little bit, inshallah. I wanted us to actually take a look at what the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said about plagues. Um, you know, this is, there's a, there's a, does the coronavirus um, qualify under these narrations about plagues? 
there is um, a difference of opinion. Some say that it's it has to be a plague that necessary, right? The disease that's being talked, the person has it, they will, will right? So it's a disease that kills lots of people, but it could be any disease. It doesn't have to be the plague. It can be other diseases as well. Uh, when Aisha radiallahu she asked actually the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi about pestilence or like epidemic diseases, he said, "Kana adaban yabathu Allahu ala may yasha, fajalahu Allahu rahmatan lil mu'minin, falaysa min abdin yaqaw ta'un fayamkuthu fi balidhi sabiran yalamu anhu lan yusibahu." It is a punishment, the, right, the diseases, these types of diseases, it is a punishment which Allah sends upon whoever he wills. But Allah has made it, and actually this translation is kana adaban, it's not it is, it's, it should say it was a punishment whom Allah sent upon whomever he willed. So in the past, umam, Right in the past nations, it was a punishment, and you can see that also in you know in, in general tribulation and adab that covers the people in the Quran. They were punishments. They were sent down as punishments against people who who rejected God and continue to in the face of that test. Um, it was punishment which Allah sent upon whomever He wills, but Allah has made it a mercy for the believers. Any servant who resides in a town that has a plague while remaining patient and hoping for reward from Allah, knowing that nothing will befall them except what Allah has written for them, then they will be given the reward of a martyr. So I just want to read that last part. Again, whoever remains patient, hoping for the reward of Allah, sabiran, um, that's the first um, uh, description. And knowing that nothing will befall them except what Allah has written, then they are given the reward of a, of a martyr. Now, in the different categories of martyrdom in Islam, of people who can have the rank of shahada, uh, most of those categories require dying. Most of those uh, categories require dying. Right? So a person who dies um, of uh, a woman, for example, if she dies during labor, right, that's considered shahada. She still dies. She has to die to attain this rank. Um, there's other examples of people who die and it's con it's not, they drown, for example, the one who dies through drowning. Um, I don't have all of them in front of me, but in the other cases, it requires the person to actually die to have this rank. Um, and in this case, the Prophet ﷺ is actually telling us that they don't, they, to be given the reward of the martyr, they are not, it's not a, it's not a requirement to die. <laughs> they simply have to observe quarantine while the, in a situation where, where the plague is there and has spread to their town. And they have to have patience and they have to have this faith in God during that time when they're given that reward. Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani in his commentary on this narration, he says that he says that this reward is given to one that um, that the plague is, you know, is in their town, even if they do not die, as long as they have three conditions. That first, that they have patience. Two, that they hope, uh, they have ihtisab for the reward with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're looking at him. And three, that they know that everything is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If the person faces the tribulation with these three things, they have the reward of a martyr. Now, I don't, you know, we think about like the greatest ranks that anyone can attain with God, right? There's the prophets, there's the awliya, there's the siddiqeen, right? And there's martyrs. This is one of the highest ranks of, that person can have in paradise. So you hear this and... It really, for me, it makes me think, you know, subhanAllah, like this is just an example to me that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most generous.
but he is the most generous. Like what have we done? What have we done to deserve, to possibly deserve the reward of a martyr while we're still living and we're still eating and we're still playing with our families and we're getting on Zoom meetings. A lot of death around us. There's in New York, I think the death toll has reached, I don't know, the double thousands, um, the, the tens of thousands already. And there's going to be a lot of people who pass from this, no doubt. The estimation in America is around 200,000 at least. But for everyone else, that I mean, these people for who are, who believe they die inshallah in, in as with the rank of a martyr and the people who simply observe quarantine, they have the reward of a martyr so is that not thing that we need to be extraordinarily grateful for i mean i can even imagine a more for those of us who alhamdulillah are not worrying about food that we're not starving that we have a roof over our heads that we're not um, wondering where the next paycheck is coming from somehow alhamdulillah Allah has given us sustenance during this time and literally just to observe the quarantine right and the Prophet ﷺ said that if you hear about a plague in a land then don't go into it but if it befalls a land in which you are in then don't leave it and don't leave it and run away from the plague so we do have to observe the rules of the quarantine it's part of getting the reward inshallah and I think about this also in in, in terms of just the way that our hearts are turning towards God during this time. Um, you know, this is something that I'm, in terms of the, just the mercy that we see on social media, on uh, messages and phone calls. All I personally witness when I talk to anyone uh, about this, even people who are not Muslim, literally people who are not even Muslim who are experiencing this, is everyone's talking about how um, after this is over, they're not going back to the way things were before. Like everyone is making a form of tawbah. For Muslims are turning back to Allah. People are talking about this time of khalwa, of being alone and rectifying themselves, of having time to worship more, of, of, um, of uh, f fixing what needed to be fixed in their, in their immediate families and for the relations inside their families getting better through this because they're now quarantined together there. So you're seeing subhanAllah so many blessings in this tribulation, right? There's, there's I mean, all I'm, I'm like, I literally do not see anyone talking about how sad this is. I see people talking about how there's so much to learn from this. To me, that's that's a really glad tiding, I think, for the Ummah. Like when I see this on social media with thousands of people talking about, um, you know, turning back to God and every reflection is about God. You know, it's about, uh, you know, um, again, bettering ourselves in some way. You know, so there's um, some people are reflecting on their prayers during this time. Some people are reflecting on um, how, they, how they realize that they have they, so much to be uh, to give in charity that they've they, they've um, hoarded you know their wealth and they want to this is a time that they really realize that they don't need very much to survive and so it's it's kind of like it's having an effect on people which is turning them to God um, people who are not Muslim uh, I've had conversations with people who are not Muslim saying when this is over they're going to be changing the way that they live they don't want to live such a wasteful lifestyle that um, you know this the virus came about because of mistreatment of animals that are being sold in wet markets and whatnot and this is just a sign that everyone you know that the way that we live on this earth has an impact on everyone else we need to live in a way that is more environmentally conscious and responsible you know uh, uh, you know just changing the way that they live even moving out of where they live currently to live somewhere where they can be more responsible environmentally um, with how they live so subhanallah I just for as looking at the response of the human population, the generosity of the human population right now, I, I all I see is mercy. I see rahma everywhere, um, and I think it's really interesting because on one hand I'm looking at the response of Muslims. On the other hand, I'm also looking at the response of people who are who come from other faiths, and um, the you know um, uh, I believe it's in the one of the um, discussions that Sheikh Walid Musad had uh, had in his class that he's teaching right now, where that he says that the um, the Ummah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu is not just those who accept Islam. It's everyone 
whom he was sent to. So all of mankind that exists in our time right now is part of the ummah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the overall human response of the ummah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the, the, the vast response that is, at least that from what I can tell, is people being generous, people donating to each other, people giving charity. There's something I saw recently that like literally had me in tears. There's um, in New York, there's a, there's a um, there's a place called Meal Hub, or there's a there's a service now called Meal Hub, which says that anyone who lives in New York who needs a free meal can now get free meals Monday through Friday at any of the their 400 locations across New York, uh, and anyone can pick up three meals anytime for free to go meals at a time. They all, all the sites offer vegetarian and halal options, no ID required. I mean, that's the, whoever put that together, whoever donated, whoever is serving that cause. Like, it took a pandemic for us to say nobody should go hungry in this, right? It took a worldwide global pandemic for people to realize wait, we can all do something to make sure that other human beings are not suffering um, and that we have the ability to do it. That's one of the wonderful things that I'm witnessing in this is just how much there are helpers. Everybody wants to help. Anyone who runs a nonprofit organization right now, it's interesting because one of the fears is sometimes there's an unstable economy. Your donors are gonna drop. And I've been talking to other leaders of other Muslim organizations and they've said, SubhanAllah, not a single donor has dropped. Like there's nobody saying we can't give. Either Allah has blessed them or these people are given taqwa and, 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 and hope in Allah that Allah would give them what they need to fulfill the pledge that they had in terms of how much they will be donating. Um, again, I want to go back to some of the blessings that the re in terms of what is the reward of a martyr mean. Uh, in a hadith in Tirmidhi, when a martyr dies, when they die, they will be shown their place in paradise. They will be spared the trial of the grave. They will be secure on the day of greatest terror, the day of judgment. They, there will be placed on their head a crown of dignity, one ruby of which is better than this world and all that is in it. And they will be permitted to intercede for 70 of his relatives. They are in the barzakh also after, this is not in the hadith, this is a different narration. They're also in the barzakh after death and they're given the in, from the enjoyments of paradise. This is for someone who, you know, it says dies shaheed. But imagine now we're in a place where we can have the reward and possibly the rank of someone who died in this way. You know, that, 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 that's, that's, a, that's unimaginable, subhanAllah, to, to me. Outside, like to, when I think about this, it's, it's not what did we do to deserve this punishment, although ne truly necessarily on this earth, a lot of harm was happening before this, this, this virus. Um, took place. Um, there's been a lot of genocides on this earth right now, like in different parts of the world, in China, um, what's happening to the Oilers, what's happening in Burma. So I'm not saying that there's not a lot of oppression in the world, but that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in a time of great oppression. I mean, there's almost a Muslim country we cannot imagine that we do not see some kind of heavy level of devastating oppression. You know, look at uh, what's going on in Syria, what has happened in the last decades in Palestine, what has happened um, just any part of the world in, in poverty, um, in, in wars and in infighting that's just destroyed populations. Which part of the world do you look to to be like, oh, you know, that's an established, there's very few places, especially in the Muslim world. And then on top of that, add what's happening in terms of the crimes against the environment. There are, there are crimes against animal populations. I was watching a documentary about what happens to animals that are being sold in the wet markets. There's torture. There's so much harm being done uh, and waste and destruction. So all of these things, subhanAllah, there's a lot of dark pressure that was there in, in, in the world that we've lived in uh, before this virus happened. And in, you know, I said this in a different discussion, different reflection that when you feel so much negative pressure, and by negative I mean like there's a lot of pain, there's a lot of destruction, there's a lot of harm, there's a lot of suffering, that there's a breaking point, and you wonder like something's got to give, like something's gonna got to happen because the world cannot 
bear this much pain continuously. And this, and it's, and it's not in happening in one place or two, but it feels like it's happening everywhere. There's so much bigotry that's being spread. Uh, it's not that these things didn't exist in the world before, but if in our times, it really feels like these things were just magnified and exponentially increased and in regions where they didn't previously exist. You know, something that comes together with, in that way, my fear was that there's going to be a, a global war or another, you know, like World War III may break out. Like something is going to, this, so this pressure will have to release in some way. And what, when I saw that, you know, there is now a global pandemic and it's a disease, it's not a war, it's a disease. It's not people fighting, it's people who are sick and trying to heal. I felt this is something that before I knew about the hadith, about pandemics and plagues and whatnot, I just felt like this has to be a mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is the first thing that happens in what we're seeing is just the resurgence of human empathy. Like we had, we had gotten to a dark point where we had lost as a, as, you know, a sense of our uh, humanity, some of our humanity at a global level, because just in order to live and make your day-to-day -day life, you have to actually shut out a lot of the pain that's occurring in the world and a lot of the trauma that's occurring in the world and kind of ignore it, but to, an, to, a, to, a, to a level that can even create some apathy. Like I can't, I can't feel that right now because that's just too much pain and I have to take care of things. If I feel that much pain all the time, I can't, I can't, I can't live my immediate life. And, um, and so there's like almost necessary sort of blocking off of and self-protection for the purpose of self-preservation um, you know, not empathizing, not feeling the pain that other people are going through. And what this pandemic has done is it's really, re it's, it's, it's just busted open the heart to feel empathetic towards other human beings, because that's what happens in illness. Everyone now feels what another human being is going through. It's connecting people on the basis of their humanity. Um, Muslim and non-Muslim, people from different races, different ethnicities, different backgrounds, all of the, like when you think about all of the oppression that's been ignored, now people who didn't empathize with things like not being able to travel, right? Um, we're all stuck in our homes, you can't travel. People who couldn't empathize with people who have food insecurity now have to worry about, am I gonna have enough food to get through the quarantine? People who, whatever people were just not paying attention to, we're all feeling so many different levels of caring for another human being that is suffering. We're feeling how sad it is for innocent people to die. We're feeling how sad it is for um, children and for the elderly to be very vulnerable to this. I mean, it's just opening the heart. That's what it. That's what it feels like. And the, and the, the stories of compassion. I, I could be on for the for another hour just talking about what's come out in terms of just beautiful stories of people helping each other during this time and um, turning to what to one another in human love and human brotherhood and sisterhood and just all of the labels kind of dropping away and just seeing each other as a creation of God that deserves to be honored. People, even people who don't believe in God, just you, that the human species deserves to be, you know, we should, we, we should be treating each other with a level of goodness. Um, I, I'm, I think over time, so I won't, uh, I have some more content. I don't really need to present it. I just want to end with a narration from the Prophet Muhammad He said, Man bihi khayran yusib minhu. If Allah intends good for someone, uh, then he afflicts them with trials. And so subhanAllah, this is, this is how we can look upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during this time and be grateful and count our blessings. Uh, that when we, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that when we are grateful, he certainly grants us more. Um, and, you know, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to, to really witness the blessings that he's showering us with in the midst of this tribulation. May he protect our families from becoming sick. May he protect all of us. May he grant shifa to everyone who's sick. Um, and uh, and at the same time, may he bless us with this beautiful reward. May he allow us to, ha to have the response necessary. Grant us a tawfiq to have the spiritual response necessary um, to attain the reward of a martyr without dying, you know, and to attain it 
and subhanAllah, and then maybe continue to live in this life, inshallah, and be part of the light that's to come. It's, always, it's said that it always gets darkest right before the break of dawn. Um, and uh, if it's, the times are getting harder, then inshallah, it's only a sign that the opening and the relief is very close and very near. Uh, so whatever I said is beneficial is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever I said is wrong and, and mistaken is from myself and shaitan. If anyone has any questions, inshallah, now we can open it to that. Well, uh, there is nothing to be said after what you have said. We thank you so much for um, all the, uh, not just words of wisdom, words from your hearts that came uh, straight to our hearts. And we have some few requests uh, asking to share the rest of the content. <laughs> so I'm not sure what to do. Uh, like they, you know, you... <laughs> But anyway, let, let, maybe we should start for, with some questions, so for the sake of time. So the first question we have is, uh, how do you balance between being in a state of sakina and contentment with God's decree and still be in a state of tadarru' uh, and utter desperation for his faraj? And still be in a state of utter desperation for? I didn't hear the last one. Uh, for Faraj, you know, for like opening, oh, for, for Faraj, you know, yeah. like release of, or relief of, uh, uh, you know, calamities. Or... Um, I was going to say, Dr. Hiba, also, if you feel at point, uh, I'd like to chime in and um, answer any of the questions. Um, you are our teacher, alhamdulillah. So, um, you know, before, before I answer anything, I defer to you. Um, uh, what comes to mind and the timing of all this uh, regarding the question is um, uh, the Prophet Muhammad's response in Ta'if and his prayer in Ta'if. He was clearly in a place where he had he was turning to God looking for an opening for an end and it was the, the, uh, in and in, in turn to God in his state of, he says, um, right? Like I, the, the weakness of my own strength. Um, so he's turning to God in that, from the place of, I have no ability. I have no power. I have no strength. I have nothing except, you know, what God gives me. Um, and feeling that in the, in what he had actually faced, uh, you know, uh, SubhanAllah, the story's long, I don't want to go into it, but just that he in the he turned to God in his deep pain. Um, and at this same time, because you're not angry with me, I don't care. And he's open with that. I'd love to dot right now, maybe word in structure of the it's someone who their heart they've surrendered their affair to god um at the end he says with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if allah grants them that tawfiq to respond well spiritually like if they look if they are relying on allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself for the string right? I don't have um, have this beautiful reward with them. You know, be toward him is yourself for any of these beautiful lofty goals. I'm gonna put all of my reliance on God. This is a time where I could be so close to you. I don't know how to get there by myself, right? Get me there. So um, that's, uh, I hope that helps to answer the question. Uh, oh. Okay, so there was another question uh, from Tala, I believe that, um, that I lost because uh, we got disconnected. Um, so let me see if I could, um, Okay, here we go. Uh, so uh, Tala is asking, you could still see the questions, right, uh, Shaykha Muslima? Yes, I just opened the chat. Okay, okay so um, regarding the hadith you mentioned, uh, it is recommended 
uh, is it recommended that we seek the wisdom behind tribulations? Sometimes it is problematic to ask what is God teaching me because how can we know what God intends? Okay. Um, this is a good question. Um, in terms of the, uh, the thing, the, the statement that I mentioned about Rida and about um, uh, the, the idea of um, looking to the tribulation and saying, um, what does, um, yeah, what does, how can I learn from this? This is, um, these were, those were the words of Dr. Amr Farooq Abdullah. Um, they were not a hadith, just to be clear. Um, those are just his lessons or his teaching, his spiritual teaching in terms of how we can approach a tribulation. Um, but I think the question is good in terms of, uh, you know, the, that um, what is, it can be problematic to say, okay, what does God intend? Um, so in a tribulation, it's not that you're asking God um, for a specific, like to know the specifics of his, of his wisdom, right? Because he is the all wise. I, I can never, you know, know, God's wisdom, you know, um, but I can reflect on, um, on blessings. I can reflect on things that I see to be wisdom in the world. So um, there's, and part of that is something that's revealed to us also in Hadith literature, um, this idea that Allah does not test us, or sorry, um, that, uh, you know, wondrous is the affair of the believer. There's patience and there's gratitude and they're, both of them are good. So they both have reward. Um, that's one example, but you can, there's like compilations of narrations of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that talk about uh, patience in particular during times of tribulation. And um, there are things that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is actually looking uh, and testing. Like he does test us for a purpose. There is purpose behind it. It's not haphazard. Um, and it's not by accident, it's not, you know, in, in, it's not that green hand does not leave, move, you know, a leaf does not move without God, that being from the, and nothing from God's decree is just, um, is just by accident. So I, I think that's part of um, what we mean. The second is that when a person looks at something and a tribulation and they reflect on how they can draw themselves closer to God. And they can look at blessings that God is still showering upon the creation in the middle of that tribulation. What they're doing is observing God, right? And what I mean by that is everything that has happened in the past is the word of God. So I just want to repeat that. Everything that has happened. It's not, do we have Kitabullahi al maqru which is the Quran, right? Uh, that's the, the book of God that we can read. And the scholars have talked about also Kitabullahi al mandur and that is the book of God that we see with our eyes. And reflection is an act of worship. To reflect and gain lessons upon what we see is an act of worship. To reflect on, uh, uh, on events and see how we can draw ourselves closer to God in, in reflecting on those things, that's an act of worship. Um, just as Quran, right? Do they not reflect upon the words of the Quran or do they have locks upon their hearts, that verse, but also to reflect upon um, what we see, what, to reflect upon the decree that we see in front of us, uh, knowing that the most merciful the most wise has decreed whatever it is that, he, that, that it is. It could be a blessing. It could be a great thing in the sense of something that makes us happy. It could be something that makes us sad. But necessarily, if my Lord has decreed it, there is immense benefit. And so for a Muslim, you're, you're, uh, you know, they're looking at this and they're, um, they're observing you know, the blessings. The, uh, um, Ibn Atta'ala, he says that some people, they wake up and they say, what am I going to do today? Other people, they wake up and they say, what is God going to do with me today? So, you know, they see themselves as a recipient of God's goodwill for them. Um, and so to, to, to know that, yes, we are being taught, 
um, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through these things that, you know, necessarily if something is being tested, we are supposed to look for meaning um, in tribulation. We are supposed to look for that which is going to help draw us closer to God. Um, I think it would be wrong to say something like, God is doing this because of a specific X or Y with, if we don't have any kind of like indication. So in terms of how can we know what God intends? Like, I'm not going to say it would be wrong for me to say something like we are experiencing the coronavirus because of the casinos in Vegas. They needed to be shut down. So that's why we have a virus that are shutting down the casinos in Vegas. That's wrong, right? There's a specific, city there say that the world was going with grill and now this disease has come and a lot of the turmoil has now been lifted so i'm observing what has happened and i'm saying in what i have observed i see allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lifting some and alleviating some of the difficulty and some of the pain and some of the trauma in the world right now and this is a blessing i have to recognize and i should recognize i should reflect upon this blessing i should thank him for it so i think that's that's where um that's where we need to draw the differences we shouldn't we should try city uh because only allah knows uh the specifics but we should try to inshallah um, on the blessings as we see them all right. Uh, thank you so much for such an eloquent answer. And um, uh, we have maybe a couple more questions, but I think our time is up and we don't want to take uh, too much more time from you. And uh, I know your kids are waiting <laughs> so they could start their online teach uh, learning uh, for the day. We thank everybody for uh, joining us uh, this evening, uh, this beautiful evening. You made it even more beautiful. MashaAllah, and uh, you added to the blessing of uh, uh, being on, on a day uh, that's a Friday. So thank you so much for being with us and for inspiring um, all of us and for filling our hearts with more, uh, inshallah, of the beauty of uh, uh, the connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and encouraging us all to um, look at everything that's happening um, with... Um, a very i don't want to use the word positive but with the with a divine uh, uh perspective and uh, inshallah through the attribute of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bi iznillah rabbil alamin uh, any anything yeah, honor. you'd like to add um, you know will be uh, will let you close the the the, the meeting uh, please um you know, there's a there's just one like assignment that I have given to my um, tafsir class students, and so I want to offer the assignment to you guys if you guys are interested in it. It's just an offer. Is um, it's that uh, at the end of every night, um, if we can try to thank God, not just for the blessings that we enjoy on a worldly level in terms of how if your health don't have the virus, your family's safe, all of that. Those are definitely thank Allah for, also to really get at the whatever good deeds to trade on time. That you sleep, you try to think about um, that you were able to do during the day, mm. and genuinely from your heart, if we can try to. Um, um, that he allowed us to do those things that he granted us tawfiq to do this, those things that may he accept them and I pray that Allah allows us to love him and to love those whom he loves and that he grants us the love of all the things that bring about his love inshallah ameen barakallahu alaykum ameen barakallahu alaykum assalamu alaykum thank you wa alaykum assalamu wa rahmatullah honored thank you